what if I can't show that I have central bank digital currency? What if I choose to have Bitcoin, right? Mm -hmm. So what if I have a, a wallet on my phone and I go through customs and they say, oh my God, you have a Bitcoin wallet? You go to jail. And the thing is, no due process, no trial, 20 years. That's a frightening totalitarian dystopian reality. And yet people are sleepwalking and not paying attention. Look, if you're not terrified of what's going on right now, you're just not paying attention. And, and I am truly terrified. Hey guys, welcome back to Let's Talk Crypto. Investor Mark Yusko is an advocate of the trustless network embodied by blockchain and Bitcoin, as opposed to the trust system that characterizes the current financial system. He calls it the truth net and considers it to be a technological advancement. In his latest interview with Understanding Macro, Yusko discussed the ultimate goal of central banks to gain full control over people's lives and money. He believes that central banks have been given too much prominence and have been interfering unnaturally with the economy, as prices should be determined by buyers and sellers in the markets. Yusko also commented on the role of the Federal Reserve, which is neither federal nor has any reserves, rather, it is a corporation owned by the banks and a few extremely wealthy families which control the entire financial system. He notes that this new system central banks are trying to bring into society is pure evil and warns of the risks posed by such a system. He's referring to central bank digital currencies, a tool designed by central banks to gain full control and, in Mark's opinion, enslave the population. He argues that this digital currency is being presented as a solution to protect people from scams, when in reality, people will be robbed of the money they foolishly trusted to be managed by the government. He warns that people are not paying close attention and will eventually be deceived. Let's listen to Mark Yusko as he uncovers the central bank's endgame and exposes the truth behind the environmental narrative. But before we do, please consider subscribing to our channel as we bring you daily content on the latest crypto news. And now, let's jump right into the video. My friend says it best. He says, I remember a day when I couldn't tell you the names of the central bankers. I long for those days to return. Central bankers are not supposed to be all powerful. They're not supposed to be on the covers of magazines as the people who save the world. They're just not, right? They're supposed to be the lender of last resort, right? They're not supposed to be enriching a small, you know, subset of people, but that's exactly what they do. And central banking is basically a money machine for the owners of that entity. Well, who owns it? The Rothschilds and a handful of other families and the banks themselves. It's, you know, right. central banks are not, are not government entities. They're not like the federal reserve is not federal, nor does it have any reserves. It's not a bank. There are no deposits there. It, it's, it is literally a policy making body that controls this government interest rate, which price controls are never good. I don't care what you're talking about, minimum wage, mm -hmm. rent control, anything. Price controls are bad. Markets should determine prices. Supply and demand should determine prices. And this movement toward uh, digital throws a wrench in the system, right? Fiat system, centralized, controlled by a small number of governments and their agencies, the central banks. If you have a digital system that can exist outside of nation states and borders and be truly global and can actually be deflationary instead of inflationary, meaning we know the fixed supply of Bitcoin forever and always, mm -hmm. we can't print more of it. And therefore the value should store value very effectively as opposed to, you know, I, I use the example of gasoline, right? When I learned to drive, I paid 33 cents for a gallon of gas. Now, if I went and bought a gallon of gas today, it would cost me $5. It's the same gallon of gas. It does the same thing, producing mm -hmm. heat in the engine. Now, what's funny about that is, why does it cost $5 to 33 cents? Well, the gas didn't get better. The money got worse. Mm -hmm. And so that that erosion of purchasing power, where will all that value go? Right to the tippy top, right? We have the greatest wealth and income inequality in the history of the world. And it's because of this 
theft through inflation. Inflation, you know, the greatest con job in the world is convincing the mass population that inflation is good for you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean, on what planet is a system designed to take half your purchasing power over 30 years good for you? That makes no sense. Fiat is bad enough, right? Fiat is currency that can be corrupted by those in charge, right? It can be devalued. Our wealth can be stolen because inflation is, a, is theft, right? It's, it's, a, it's a theft of our wealth. And you know, we earn our money, it's ours, and they steal it back from us through this thing that we have no control over. They get to set policies that, that dictate the inflation rate. And that, you know, to me sucks. So now I think we have this new system, Bitcoin at all, that allows us to free ourselves from that tyranny or a portion of our wealth. We can protect a portion of our wealth. Yusko believes central bank digital currencies, CBDCs, to be the worst version of fiat money. It is still a trust-based system on a currency that can be printed at will, but it also has a surveillance and control mechanism associated with it. On top of that, its programmable nature allows governments to dictate when, where, and how much of our money we can spend, or even worse, seize our funds completely and lock us out of the financial system. Let's return to Yusko's interview as he delves deeper into this idea and breaks down the environmental narrative to expose the truth. Now we're going to double up, double down on, on all the bad of fiat. And we're going to add surveillance and programmability. I mean, think about just the natural extension of it. Not only is every transaction you make now surveilled, not only can they program which transactions you can and can't make, what if they decide that peanut butter shouldn't be consumed? Mm -hmm. Can't buy peanut butter. What if Walmart were to pay a little extra to say that your CBDC doesn't work at Target? Because that could never happen. Sure it could. I mean, absolutely could. I'm not saying it will, but it could. Or you get paid on Friday, have a couple cocktails, you drunk text about the president, and you wake up and your money's worth 70 cents on the dollar. Or you donate to the truckers and they seize your money. Your money's no good. Or you don't spend it by a certain date and it evaporates. That's mm -hmm. what they do in China right now. All of that programmability can't happen in a decentralized world. It can only happen in a centralized world. So central bank digital currency is all the worst things about centralization and fiat and control coupled with all the speed and programmability of blockchains. And it's just, it's a dystopian nightmare. And you know, just think about, think about vaccine passes, right? I mean, there's a whole period of time I couldn't come to the UK because I couldn't show a vax pass. Mm -hmm. Well, what if I can't show that I have central bank digital currency? What if I choose to have Bitcoin, right? There's an, there's a bill in our current, you know, Congress called the Restrict Act that basically wants to say, <clears throat> if you have a certain app on your phone that is banned by government, now they're targeting TikTok, but it says any app. Mm -hmm. So what if I have a, a wallet on my phone and I go through customs and they say, oh my God, you have a Bitcoin wallet? You go to jail. And the thing is, no due process, no trial, 20 years. Mm -hmm. You go to jail for 20 years for having TikTok on your phone, according to this bill. Now, I don't think the bill will get passed in its current form, I, I hope. Um, but that's a frightening, totalitarian, dystopian reality. And it's all tied part and parcel to this idea of if government has control of your digital identity, then you really are a slave, right? I mean, you are at their mercy for where you can go, how you can go, if you can go, you know, talk about these 15 minute cities, mm -hmm. it's all, you know, climate emergency things, garbage. Oh, we need to restrict your movement to save the planet. No, you told me 20 years ago that by 2020, Florida would be underwater and the world would be on fire. None of those things happened. So maybe 
you had a different agenda, which is, why do you want me to have an electric car? So you can turn off the software, right? Not because you want to save the planet because, you know, mining lithium is probably worse for the planet than burning fossil fuels, quite honestly. So in the old days, code was not truth because it could be changed. Um, now we have truth. And once we have truth, we don't need to pay for trust. We don't need to worry about trust. And we certainly don't need to be abused by trust. So what digital currencies to me enable is a centralized, really authoritarian, tyrannical state that restricts our basic freedom. And yet people are sleepwalking and not paying attention. Look, if you're not terrified of what's going on right now, you're just not paying attention. And, and I am truly terrified and I'm not panicking and I'm not, I'm not picking up and moving yet, but you know, this isn't like, oh, if you elect Trump, I'm moving to Canada. This is way worse than that, right? If you start taking my rights away, my fundamental rights of life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness and mm -hmm. freedom to move and freedom to own, yeah, that's, that's a bad situation. Bitcoin was designed to revolutionize the concept of money and break away from traditional state-controlled currencies. Its decentralized nature ensures that it is not subject to manipulation or control by any one single entity, while its fixed supply helps to avoid inflationary pressures. Overall, Bitcoin replaces trust with truth and frees humanity from state tyranny. What's your opinion of Yusko's perspective on central bank digital currencies? Are you taking any precautionary measures to safeguard your wealth? Let us know in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video, please make sure to give us a like and subscribe. Thank you so much for watching. This is Let's Talk Crypto and we'll see you in the next video.